Become a wealth creator today. Text VISIT to 800-454-1184 to schedule your 15-minute call with Eric and his team. That's VISIT to 800-454-1184. We all know resolutions are easy to make and even easier to break. So it is time to look ahead already and think about practical goals for the new year. And if you could use some guidance on creating and sticking to your financial goals, here's the number for you to take down right now. 800-454-1184. You can call Eric and his team at Heckman Financial for a complimentary appointment. 800-454-1184. Another way you can do it is use that phone number, 800-454-1184. Text the word toolbox to Eric and get his book, Blueprint to Worryless Wealth, plus other educational materials. Just text that word toolbox and we'll be telling you all about it throughout our show. Find us online anytime at wealthcreatorradio.com. Erica cannot believe it. I am telling you, Happy New Year again <laughs> so soon. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So definitely another new year. And, uh, you know, some of it's, you know, real and some of it's fake, right? It's just another, you know, movement of the calendar. But yep. it is it is always a good time to reflect on, you know, okay, how did things do and where you're at and, you know, where should you be? And, uh, you know, so that's one of the big things that, you know, for financial reasons, right? You want to look at how, how were you last year and how were you, you know, the year before and are you progressing and doing the things you should be doing. Can I take a moment to ask you personally, what are your goals for uh, 2024? Because I know you're an avid bicycler. Yeah. So no, I don't, right now we're still developing our, our cycling goals. We're definitely doing a tour in Europe with, <gasps> with uh, some of my sons there. Ooh. So we're going we're to do one of those. So uh, cool. But we might do another crazy big trip, but I haven't, I haven't, we haven't totally figured that one out yet. Okay, so we're having, right. we're having to work on that one. But uh, yeah, no, beyond that, it's just more about, uh, you know, our, our our big thing is just working on processes and getting things, you know, mm-hmm. getting things set the right way. So that's, that's always a big one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, that's your goal for everybody that you work with. Um, you know, we talk about all of our, uh, a lot of our resolutions have to do with physical goals, right? So many people, you know, oh, I'm going to go to the gym now. And then by, you know, January 30th, it's all over. But how um, helpful would it be to make financial New Year's resolutions? Well, you know, if, if you write them down, that's one thing. Um, yeah, that, that's one one step to, to making them more real. Um, I would write them down on a piece of paper with an actual old school pen. Ah. Uh, you know, not type it on your phone because okay. it's not quite as real. Yeah. And then uh, if you want to make it even more real, post it someplace uh, visible to all the see. So, you know, if it's you know, in your house or whatever on the fridge or, you know, something, but, but also the bigger part of course is, uh, you know, making it actually have a date, right. And how many, it doesn't have to be fully done, right. Just what, what steps are you going to do when, and, uh, you know, this works for personal goals and it works for, you know, financial goals, both. Right. So you can be, you know, if you want to start working out more, well, don't start off by working out for two hours straight. Right? Well, <laughs> Kill we'll start yourself. At, yeah, start at 10 or 15 minutes and, and see if you can add five minutes, you know, every week or every other week and, you know, to get it up there, you know, at a higher number and such, right? So same with financial, you know, you're not going to be able to put 30 grand all of a sudden in your 401k and in January, that'd be pretty painful probably. And, <laughs> you know, uh, so it, it's more about, okay, if we have this much, can I put one more percent in? Can I, you know, have it, you know, go up a little bit. Those are little simple things that you can do. And actually a lot of 401ks now have a a thing called auto escalation where they'll, you can even turn on a feature where it'll automatically go up 1% every year. Hmm. And so that way you kind of don't really notice it because it's just kind of like slowly moving. And yeah, so yeah, there's lots of ways that, uh, to kind of systematize a lot of these uh, things and, and then it actually becomes real. Right. Now, it's obviously easy to feel so motivated. You know, you set your goal. You're like, yes, I'm going to do it. But we do get sidetracked along the way. So talk about how you do kind of act like an accountability partner to the people that you work with and their financial goals. Yeah, for for us, it's really more about having an income plan. So the income plan is that projection of, you know, say you're in your 40s, 50s, whatever, early 60s, and you're hoping to retire somewhere up there. And, uh, you know, you, you need to know, of course, 
how much can I, can I spend per month, you know, or this is how much I need to spend every month. So when can I retire and how long will it last? And so it's very simple to run that every year and say, okay, are those numbers looking better, you know, or worse, right? So are you running out of money sooner? Uh, that's not good. Uh, you know, no. if, if your money's lasting longer, then that's great. Uh, you're on the right track. And, you know, so that's, that's one simple thing just to see, you know, how you're doing. But even more simple is just how much did you put away last year and how can you increase it? So, you know, there's lots of ways to increase it. Like I said, auto escalate 401k, start putting a little bit more into savings, uh, you know, just start doing some systematic things. I mean, one of the simplest, simplest things is pay yourself first. I mean, that's such an old, old, you know, cliche kind of phrase, but mm-hmm. it really works. And there's a reason why some of these cliche phrases are <laughs> right. Still around. Uh, still around <laughs> always last because of, yeah, they'll always be there. And, you know, so, the, you know, there's lots of, depends on your phase of life, right? If you're younger and all that stuff, but uh, if you're closer to retirement, yeah, you definitely want to be checking in if you're, you know, in your twenties or thirties, maybe it's just more, did I put more away? Is it money growing? Is it getting bigger? Uh, you know, and, and am I just keeping putting away more? Cause sometimes it may go down with the markets or something, but are you still saving more? And so that, that's kind of the big thing. So, you know, one of the things we've set up is actually a whole digital toolbox of several different downloads. Uh, we've got stuff like, will my money last as long as I do? Social security timing decisions, uh, women and money. There, there's lots of different things in there. They're all short, you know, 15, 20 minute reads and even have a copy of my book, Wear Less Wealth and a way to set a time to talk with me, Eric, for about 15 to 30 minute phone call to ask any questions that you have and kind of go over, go over those concerns and see how you can actually, you know, take charge this year. So uh, if you want to get a copy of all that stuff, all you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text word toolbox 800-454-1184 800-454-1184 or download it directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. And again, you're listening to Wealth Creator Radio with my friend Eric Heckman of Heckman Financial, who's been helping retirees just like you for, oh my gosh, over 30 years now. So uh, he's someone who can certainly guide you and he's seen it all. <laughs> so we're talking right now about you know New Year's resolutions and what we need to do financially for our financial goals. Um, sometimes our priorities and our goals end up changing because, you know, life happens, things get in the way. So Eric, how do you talk to someone and help them make adjustments to their retirement plan when life does throw them a curveball? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously these things happen, right? There's could be a health change, could be uh, grandkids that are a different part of the country and all of a sudden you want to move. I've got a lot of clients that, you know, have done that. I've got a client now in Pennsylvania who probably would have never thought he ever would live in Pennsylvania, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's lived here pretty much his whole life in, in California. But yeah, the grandkids were there and, you know, he wanted to be with it. So, mm. okay, how's that change your whole plan and how's that, you know, do things? So those curveballs can be positive or negative, right? It just depends on yeah. how they, how they, how they play out. But, um, you know, and so that's when we go back to the income plan, we go back to the blueprint and say, okay, what, what should we change? How does this affect things? And, you know, it, it's not that hard to, to figure out solutions to those, but yeah, if you have a plan, it's easy, but yeah, if you don't have any sort of plan to review, then it, it gets really tough. So yeah, that, that's probably the biggest key. Okay. Get that plan. And then you can just make adjustments along the way. And then real quick, looking back on this past year, what financial lessons do you think we should take from 23 into 2024? Well, the the old don't fight the Fed definitely <laughs> still still uh, was was very big, uh, you know, with the massive amounts of rate increases that kept going from twenty two into twenty three, and uh, you know, so that that hurt bonds or uh, you know changed a lot of things. Uh, re, you know, obviously things like real estate uh, mortgage rates shot up, and uh, you know, savings yeah. accounts though also shot up. So. Yeah, there's That's good. pros and cons yeah, for, for yeah. a lot of that stuff, right? So, uh, you know, and the market was very volatile. It was, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. It, had, it was kind of like, almost like the tides going in and out, it seemed like, and, and such. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things to be thinking about is it's like, can't time that, can't figure that out, just keep plowing that money away. Um, but if you're in retirement, you need to have, 
better ways to withdraw money. Because if you were just withdrawing money every single month, you would have had some really bad months and some really good months. But when you cash in those those dollars, those shares, they don't come back up in, in those, you know, those other months. So, uh, you know, so that's one of the things, again, is having that overall plan. Uh, one of the ways you, you can do that is get that income plan, that blueprint to worry less wealth. And all you have to do is if you want to set up a time to talk and go over this, uh, just text the word VISIT to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word VISIT. 800-454-1184 or book directly online at wealthcreatorradio.com. And Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman continues right after this. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wealth Creator Radio so you can stay up to date on ways to build your wealth and create a retirement you and your family will enjoy for years to come. Like and subscribe today and create your wealth for tomorrow with Wealth Creator Radio. Are you happy with your Medicare plan? Even if you are, what was good for you this year might not be what's best for you next year. The team at Heckman Financial can help you sort through all the options to find the best one for you. Call now, 800-454-1184. That's 800-454-1184. Hi, you're listening to Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman. He is president of Heckman Financial. We're so happy to have you along with us today. So if you think back 20 years ago, I bet a lot of things happened that you didn't see coming. Think about it, Eric. The last 20 years of your life, what all has taken place? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously for me, I had raised three kids and, you know, got some out of college and some, <laughs> some closer to getting out of college or got on the way. But, yeah, uh, you know, but then also just technology, everything, right? There's the, the world's definitely different, uh, you know, digital communications, everything there. So, yeah, it's, yeah, change will always be happening and, you know, just need a plan for that and accept it, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah, you look back at things that happened, so many blessings and even some unknowns and all that's going to continue in the future too. And so that's where I want to go with all of this right now, Eric. Tell us what are some of the big unknowns for retirement that we need to be aware of? Yeah, well, the the biggest four are uh, longevity. Of course, we know, nobody knows how long we're going to live. Uh, healthcare costs, which we do know one thing about those, they'll always be going up. <laughs> uh, you know, how the market's going to do over time, you know, which which decade, which positive, are you going to get a good decade, bad decade, so forth. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and then taxes, um, kind of like healthcare costs, always going to go up, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so for taxes and, and markets, people, of course, focus a little bit probably more on those, but longevity and healthcare, it's kind of part where they don't focus as much. Right. So let's take longevity, the first unknown you mentioned. Um, we don't know how long we're going to live in retirement, fortunately, right? I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to know when my end day is. But how do we know if we've saved enough when we decide to retire because we don't know how long we're going to be here? Yeah, no, it's always a big question and biggest concern pretty much for most people is outliving their money. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people underestimate how long they're going to live and they figure, oh, well, you know, I'm not going to be that old. And, and then, you know, some, I mean, it's funny because sometimes I'll talk to people and, oh, yeah, I, I don't think I'll make it past 75 or 80. And then, <laughs> and then their parents are still alive in their 90s or something <laughs> like that. You kind of go, well, why? Yeah. You know, but, but it, it is just some sort of weird mental thing that everybody kind of underestimates how long we're going to live, but then we think of other people living a long time and we don't associate that to us for some reason. But <laughs> so what, one of the things is you have to have an income plan. You have to have an income plan that says, okay, you know, with taxes, with inflation, you know, all your mo- types of money and, and how they're taxed and run that out, you know, and does that money that last age 100? Uh, if it makes it to 95, yeah, probably close enough. If it makes it a 75, well, okay, time to redo your plan a little bit and maybe extend it out or, you know, do some big changes. So, uh, yeah, you, you definitely need to have that that re- income plan to, to really try to figure that out. All right. So why don't we get into some of the tools that we can use then to, to help make sure that our money is going to last as long as we do? Yes. So one of the biggest things that I find is you have to have three types of money. Um, you know, everybody focuses on the market money. That's the stocks, bonds, ETFs, all that junk. Uh, 401ks, that's the only option you have in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but a lot of people forget the foundational money, stuff that's guaranteed either by insurance companies, banks or treasury. You need to have some money that's that doesn't go down in those bad years because you will have bad years, you know, in, in the economy while mm-hmm. you're retired. And 
and you don't want to lock in those losses. So that uh, diversification of money type uh, really helps you avoid desperation of having to sell assets. And then in the middle of that, that foundational money and the market money, I also like to have a thing called steady income funds where these are funds that don't have a t- typically a lot of volatility, but they pay you good income, good cash flow. Because uh, obviously you're always going to need money every month, just like when you're working, yep. you're going to need that in retirement. So, uh, you know, there are some stuff like, you know, some guaranteed annuity, other things that that can pay you a guaranteed lifetime income. And more and more research shows that you really need to have something like that for, you know, for any retirement plan really to work uh, with a high degree of of certainty because of the fact that we may live a long time, right? And if those have a feature where they keep paying, even if the account runs out of money, uh, that helps you not run out of money, right? (laughs) So (laughs) so that's that's what you really need to do. So, and we've actually... We actually have a, a quick, like, fifteen-page uh, little PDF that you can read called "Will Your Money Last as Long as You yeah. Do?" Go figure, right? Yeah, go figure. Oh, just what we're talking about yeah. at, at our Wealth Creator Toolbox. So, you know, if that's something you want to get a copy of, and a bunch of other great material in there, like uh, "Are You Paying Too Much in Taxes?" the Social Security Decision, all those fun things, and then even set it up a time to talk with uh, with me, Eric. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox, 800-454-1184, or download directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. And you are listening to Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman of Heckman Financial. I'm Luann Fulmer, and we are just having a good time talking right now about just four retirement unknowns. So Eric's bringing these to light, what we need to know about and what we need to plan for. Longevity is the first one, living a long time, but we don't know how long we're going to live. So you have to plan for that. And he's giving us some great ideas on tools we can use to make sure our income does last. Another thing, if you get into health care, I always say this. Fidelity estimates that an average couple that's like 65 years old is going to spend over $315,000 on health care costs in retirement. So those numbers are big numbers. They don't even include long-term care. So that's something we have to plan for, right? Oh, yeah. that I mean, we're just talking premiums, co-pays, you know, the prescriptions, all, all that, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and that, that all adds up to 300 grand or, yeah. you know, 150,000 per person, you know, divide that by, you know, 20 or 30 years. It's still a pretty big chunk of change, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so that's something that you have to have in your income plan. You can't just, you know, ignore that. And typically as you get older, you know, you, you get more ailments, so you take more medications and more other things, right? So that's why some of this goes up that you're not used to when you are working. Uh, so a lot of times people don't necessarily throw that into that planning process. But um, hmm. yeah, no, it is something that in, in that income plan that that does need to be a future line item of hmm. stuff that you might not be quite spending today, but you will be likely spending in the future. Right. So, but here's the deal. You could be healthy and just have smaller medical bills for a long period of time, or we could get sick and then have those big expenses, but, you know, unfortunately a, little, a shorter lifespan. So I, I don't know h- how you plan for both scenarios, Eric. That's got to be tough. <laughs> yeah. So, well, uh, you always have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of what we do in all of our planning. So, you know, with, you know, my, my sons and myself all being Boy Scouts and, Boy Scout motto is being be prepared. Be prepared, uh, yeah. You know, so so yeah, you have to be you have to plan for the worst case more, and and then obviously, hopefully, we yeah it does yeah you are healthier. Hopefully, you, you are paying attention. I mean, one simple thing is have a plan to stay healthier, right? Ah. How are you going to keep moving? How are you going to keep uh, staying active? Mm-hmm. How you know are you getting that you know hour a day of activity every day someplace doing something, walking the dog or you know whatever it is, right? Doesn't have to be a big, big event, but something. So, uh, you know, so that's one thing. But, but yeah, lots of times life just happens and you, and you do get ill. And, and so, yeah, you do have to have that money in there. You have to have some backup money. So you need some emergency money. You need some money that's kind of accounted for in, in that plan for, for that health care. And, and then I always like to warn people is if you're married, the biggest thing, too, is how much are you going to spend in terms of the, those dollars and still have that healthier spouse that may live a lot mm. longer time frame have enough money to keep going. 
Exactly. Yeah, that's what you have to plan for the other one, too. So it takes a lot of um, planning, and that's why they need to meet with a professional like you to kind of get these things lined up. Um, the the one thing I mentioned, you know, what Fidelity estimates the cost of health care, you know, does not mention long-term care. So walk us through how you help estimate that expense as well. So we can have money left over for the spouse that remains. Yeah, no, it, it can be really tough. Uh, you know, you... you I mean, I think most of us have seen people who've you know had issues like this, but um, I mean, I've, I've had relatives pay nine thousand a month, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in long term care costs and you know, nur- you know, nursing home costs, and that's a lot of money, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, even if you're getting three thousand, maybe four thousand from Social Security, that's still a lot of money coming out and 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 you know, getting drained out of that plan. And so, for that healthier spouse. You know, there are certain things you can do. There's certain ways you can protect some of the assets. There's certain things that they don't touch. But, yeah, you, you know, the the better system is to have a plan for it, not just to self-insure and, and by doing nothing and then figuring it out when it happens because that, that's not the good time to, you know, have to figure this out. And <laughs> you already have enough on your plate of trying to, you know, care for your, your loved one, right? So. Um, I would definitely have some sort of insurance based plan, some sort of, I'm a bigger fan of the, the products that like annuities, life insurance that give you benefits that the insurance company can't change. And I think that's, those are the big ones to look at. Again, that's something we can talk about. It's always a little bit super case specific of, you know, what types of monies you have right now to fund it with and how to change assets. But, um, it's something that super critical because it is, like you said, more than half of uh, people need some sort of care. And, and I think the, the numbers are getting almost up to 70% in some studies I've seen. So, uh, you know, it, it's not something that might happen. It's something that's more than likely to happen. So again, if you want to get a little bit more information, download it all in our Wealth Creator Toolbox. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox 800-454-1184. Or download directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. Your plan for retirement has to handle, you know, what's going to happen with the markets. Are they going to be up? Are they going to be down when you decide to retire? Eric's going to talk about that next, so don't go away. This is Wealth Creator Radio. Do you know whether your retirement plan has any weak points? Discover ways on giving your financial future the proper tune-up. Simply go online to wealthcreatortoolbox.com to gain a better understanding in taxes, social security, and other ways to manage your portfolio. And that's how it's done. That's wealthcreatortoolbox.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wealth Creator Radio so you can stay up to date on ways to build your wealth and create a retirement you and your family will enjoy for years to come. Like and subscribe today and create your wealth for tomorrow with Wealth Creator Radio. Thanks for joining us. This is Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman. I'm Lou Ann Fulmer. You know, you've said this before, Eric. It's impossible to know whether the market's going to be up when you retire or down. It just kind of depends on the decade you retire. And that's one of the big unknowns that we're going to face in retirement. So talk about how <laughs> you kind of, again, plan for the worst, hope for the best, but you plan for good markets, bad markets, everything in between. Yeah, I, I always like to kind of go back through history a little bit and, you know, and think about, okay, what were the good markets and, and good decades and back to bad decades? And why why do I talk in decades? Well, it's just, you know, it's silly when people talk about, oh, if you've put money in the S&P since 1926, uh, you know, I'm sorry, who, 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 who's still alive who did that? Uh, you know, well, you would have had very- to in probably 18 in 1926, yeah. right? So yeah. that means, you know, you know, yes, you're well over 100 and yeah. you, you probably don't even remember that far back if you're still alive. But I don't think anybody's alive anymore who, who was so. around that. So why are, we using, why, why are we using the stat? You know, it, it's silliness. So so 10 years is a lot more, you know, manageable and inside your head kind of thing. And and seventies was an awful decade. A lot of high, hyperinflation issues and and just you know flat energy crisis, other things. Eighties, of course, we had the computer revolution starting, so it really revved up stuff. And nineties, of course, was you know all of the stuff about internet. 
And then we have the horrible 2000 decade where we had the dot-com crash, a great recession. That entire decade actually was slightly negative for the 10-year time frame. Hmm. And, and then the 2010s were the exact opposite. You know, we were coming out of that bad time frame and just everything shot up. And, uh, you know, and, and so I always like to equate it that if you really kind of look at all these decades, there's usually a, a great one, a bad one, and an in-between. And I think that's probably what most of us will, most of us today will be retiring for 30 years. It sounds like a long time, but it, it is pretty much the reality for most people now. And, you know, even, or maybe two, even if it's two, right? You're right. going to, there's almost always going to be a bad decade. There's always going to be a good one. And then probably in between one, you know, in, be, in there too. And, you know, if you get that third decade being the bad one, that's not bad. But if it's the first one, it's really bad, right? right. And so we don't know. And so that's why. We have to really have three types of money. We have to have the foundational uh, or the market money, which is what everybody's always focused on, 401k money and stuff like that, where it's all stocks, bonds, ETFs. But you need to have some money that's guaranteed, some money that can't go away, stuff that's earning some really good interest that's you know, guaranteed in those bad years so you can go take that money. And then you don't have to go lock in your losses. You also want some steady income money, stuff that doesn't fluctuate a bunch in value, but pays you really good income because you always need income in Mm -hmm. retirement. And by doing that, that diversification of money types, it gives you the ability to not have desperation when you're going to have to lock in losses or anything like that. So, you know, that's how you can reduce market risk. It's also how you can, you know, more allocate your money. And, and I, I think that's the first and foremost thing that people really kind of need to start thinking about because it's very different when you're taking money out mm-hmm. versus when you're building money up because you don't care about these ups and downs when you're building money up. Right. Because you're not touching it. But once you lock in the, well, you know, once you sell, yeah, there's no coming back from that. Right. <laughs> you, know, you sold it at whatever rate price it was that day. Right. It's scary. And, you know, we we do need to avoid those emotional decisions when things get rocky, like you're saying, you know, with the economy and the stock market and all that. So obviously having a plan is going to be is going to help us avoid those those bad decisions. Right. Yeah. I I mean, having a plan helps a lot. Uh, Also, not getting yourself into that position. (laughs) So, uh, you know, and, and people you know, I, I've seen this numerous, numerous times the last 30 years where, you know, they say that they have one risk tolerance, but then they go, you know, I just, I just don't like those ups and downs anymore. And I mean, I, I sorry, I probably hear that almost once a month where, <laughs> where people said, you know, that they didn't mind it when it was, when they're younger, but once you get close to retirement or you're in retirement, you just don't want to see those values going up and down. And plus it's also, they're typically a lot bigger numbers, right? So, yeah. Uh, you know, it's one thing if your ten thousand dollars drops by ten percent, but if your million dollars drops by ten percent, you know, eight k, a hundred grand, uh, you know, that's a lot more painful to to look at and watch. And so, I think that it's a little bit of mix of both of those. And so, you know, if you're not in that crazy roller coaster. Uh, you know, the, by, you know, knowing your risk score, because that's one of the things we use, we use this risk score for clients. And, and by knowing that number ahead of time, we, we don't get you in that emotional situation where you're going to be reacting. And I always like to point out the fact that when people go to sell something, what do they go sell in bad markets? They sell the thing that dropped the least. Because nobody wants to sell the stuff that dropped the most, right? And right. plus you get less money. Yeah. And so you sell the thing that dropped the least, which means that is your best performing <laughs> stock. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of ironic how the how the mind works. And I always kind of equate this to if you have somebody who went to Vegas or, you know, casinos or someplace, right? They either will tell you two things if you say, how how, how was your trip? They'll tell you how much they won or that they had a good time. <laughs> and if they tell you how much, if they had a good time, ask them how much they lost because they will not, <laughs> they, will, they, they will be more than happy to tell you how much they won, but they'll never nah. be ha- more than happy to tell you how much they lost. And, you know, and again, so yeah, a lot of this comes down to having a plan, you know, and making sure that money is going to last, making sure you're not taking too much risk. Uh, we go over that in my book, Worry Less Wealth. Uh, we also do that when we actually meet with people and just talk to them and find out what their worries, what their concerns are. And, yeah, so there's a link in, in our digital toolbox to set a time to talk with me. There's a lot of great other resources in there, a link to my book, all this, totally free. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox, 800-454-1184, or download directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. 
This is what Eric does. He helps people retire every single day. He's been doing this for over 30 years, and he says our system is working very well. So call this number or put it in your phone so you can text the word toolbox. That's the keyword toolbox, 800-454-1184. And thanks for joining us. This is Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman. So another unknown that you said we need to be ready for is the fact that we don't know what tax policies are going to be in place when we retire. So talk about, you know, what we could be doing now, Eric, to plan for taxes in the future. Well, one of the worst things I think my entire industry does is nothing with taxes. I mean, they, they try to avoid it. Uh, most financial advisors, you know, say, go talk to your tax person. Your tax person says, go talk to your financial advisor. It's just ridiculous. Um, if you're working with a financial advisor who's not licensed or trained in taxes, uh, you know, it, it's like, oh, I only work on the left side of the body. You have to go yeah. talk to a right side <laughs> of the body doctor. It's like, what? Oh. Uh, you know, that makes yeah. no sense, right? And so if you're talking about 401ks, IRAs, dividends, capital gains, all, you know, all this stuff has tax effect. And especially with when you're talking about retirement plans, um, you know, now that they've moved the retirement age from way back when, when it was 70 and a half and then went to 72, now it's 73 or 75 if you're uh, 1960 and later. Mm -hmm. What this did is it gave us a lot more time to move some money out of that taxable IRA 401k into tax-free Roth for the rest of your life. And if you're going to be, it's not that complicated. If you're going to be in, say, the 22% bracket now and most likely 22% bracket later, but you got 10 years of time, oh my gosh, convert, pay that tax right. today. And then that 10 years of growth now goes on the t tax-free side of the ledger. Uh, so, you know, you need to be doing small conversions every single year. Every year at the end of the year, we meet with all of our clients and we look at their tax situation, look at how much income they made that year. And we figure out how much should we be converting to Roth year by year. Uh, it's not for the next generation. I mean, it helps them, but it's really for you because it helps you lower your personal tax returns. So a lot of times people, I think, kind of get this kind of confused because they think, oh, well, I'm just going to be, you know, that's more for my kids. Mm -hmm. I, why do I care? No, no, no. This is for you to pay less in tax. And so you need to be looking at your taxes year by year because the other crazy part is, you know, it depends on which monies you take. Now, I had a client come to me pretty late in, you know, they were uh, just about to turn 70, about to retire. Mm -hmm. And the very first year, uh, they didn't, they had some savings, some stock sales, other stuff that they had had before they stopped working. And both of them waited till 80, I mean, until 80, <laughs> until 70 to, to get their Social Security. So they're getting 80000 a year in Social Security wow. between the two of them. So it was great, right? They had some good income there. And only, uh, I think it was only about 26000 of that Social Security was taxed that first year. Well, the next year they started spending a lot more money. So they took money out of their, social, out of their IRA. Now 50000 of it was being taxed. The next year they took out more money because they had to pay their tax bill that they uh -huh. owed on that previous year. Now 70000 of their Social Security is being taxed. And why uh -huh. is that? Because of they were taking money out to pay taxes. Uh, you know, as they take more money out, their income goes up and that that tax goes up. So these are things that had we met a little earlier, we could have done, had some time to, to try to fix some of these things, but we didn't really have as much. So again, you know, that's why we want to talk. That's why you want to get some information. So we set up the wealth creator toolbox just to do all that. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox 800-454-1184 or download directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. We'll be right back with more of Eric Heckman and Wealth Creator Radio. Become a wealth creator today. Text VISIT to 800-454-1184 to schedule your 15-minute call with Eric and his team. That's VISIT to 800-454-1184. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wealth Creator Radio so you can stay up to date on ways to build your wealth and create a retirement you and your family will enjoy for years to come. Like and subscribe today and create your wealth for tomorrow with Wealth Creator Radio. 
Hi, I'm Lou Ann Fulmer, and you're listening to Eric Heckman, president of Heckman Financial right here in the Silicon Valley area. So happy to have you along with us on Wealth Creator Radio. So I'm going to pull up some mail, okay, some mailbag um, questions for you to go over, Eric. And I always love this segment because we get to hear from, you know, real retirees, real questions that they are experiencing. I mean, you hear this all the time, but I think it's always good to bring it to the airwaves. So you ready for this? Yeah. And a lot of these aren't, uh, a lot of these are emailed, by the way. Right, right, right. Yeah, not mail. I call it mailbag. Uh, yeah, right. but can you put emails in a bag? I don't. I, don't I know guess I, I guess don't if know. You, them, you got to print them. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Figuratively speaking. All right. right exactly. <laughs> Here we go. First question, though. Uh, this is from Glenn. Glenn says, someone at work was just telling me that the rules have changed for how my kids can inherit my IRA one day and that they'll have to pay a lot more in taxes. Could you please tell me what's going on, Eric? Yes. uh, And this is one of the things where I think all financial advisors need to be licensed in taxes. This is usually when people say, oh, I I don't give tax advice. It's like, but how are you talking to somebody about their inherited IRA then? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? So. Um, so yeah, I have license to do taxes. And one of the things that, uh, is super confusing is this new, um, this came out of the secure act in 2020 where it used to be, you could do this stretch IRA, which wasn't a yoga move. It was <laughs> a, uh, you know, it was a way to, if your kids inherited the money, they would have roughly usually about 25 to 40 years. Usually they, by the time they're in their eighties, they'd have to have the money spent. So yeah, it was very gradual that how much they had to take out. They could take it out faster, right? But they just the minimum that they had to keep taking out. Well, now, 10 years. So if somebody dies in 2023, by the end of 2033, that money's got to be gone. So this is like the government telling my three sons to say, hey, dad's gone. You got 10 years to spend his money. Yeah. And what would they say? Challenge accepted. <laughs> so, yeah, not, not the right kind of challenge you want to give no. the younger generations. Like, yeah. hey, can you spend this money faster? Fast. Yeah. Yeah. It only took your, your parents 30, 40 uh. years to save that up. But you can get rid of it in 10, can't you? Yeah. Sure. They'll, they'll do it. Uh, you know, so really what the goal is, is obviously for the government to get the money back on the taxes. So, yeah, if you're ever inheriting money from, you know, from anybody, definitely get some advice because there are exclusions for siblings or exclusions for spouses, uh, for minor children, for uh, there's a lot of different weird little mm. things in there. And if you don't get the right advice and you do this paperwork, there's no fixing it. Um, if you mess up the paperwork, it, it's over and done with whatever route you went. You had oh to keep going that way. So. Yeah, definitely want to know what's going on before okay. you take action. Very good. 800-454-1184. That's the number to call Eric and his awesome team at Heckman Financial because, you know, they have the licenses. They ha- are educated in this area. They deal with retirees every single day. So call that number if you have a question yourself. Here's another uh, mail piece, email piece that we are uh, that I have for you. It's from Dwayne. And he says, I've handled my finances myself over the years, and I've done pretty well. Everyone tells me that I should have a financial advisor now that I'm about ready to retire. But I'm having trouble with the concept of turning it all over to someone else at this point. Why should I have someone else handle it? Yeah, that's a great question. And if you're super good at doing it and you know all the distribution rules and you know all the math on the way out, because the way up, right, it's kind of like climbing Everest. Mm. Uh, You know, the stats are way more people die descending from Mount Everest than than they do climbing up. And uh, just similar to retirement planning, right? It, it, it's a lot more hazardous on the on the way down as you're spending that money down, not not building that money up anymore. And you know, there's the math changes a lot. The tax pay situation is massively different. But you know, if you think you can handle it, that's great. Uh, the hardest part I find is lots of times for, for especially it's usually guys who say this, <laughs> just in my experience. <laughs> but lots of times they have a spouse that may have nothing to do with money, may have nothing to know about money. And I mean, I've literally had somebody in here where we've had to teach her how to get her balance online because during COVID she couldn't go to the bank and her husband died. And and she used to only go into the bank to find out how much money they had. And she never even used an ATM. Oh dear. Because he always took out the money for her. Uh So 
you know, th- there's a lot of things. So, you know, if you can't handle it on your own, you know, definitely want to have somebody, but also if your spouse can't, you want to have somebody at least that you're talking with to somebody who can, who, who knows what's going on. Uh, but yeah, you better know all the different rules, ins and outs, you know, of, of what's going on for your situation. Cause it, it can be a, you know, it can be a definitely, definitely a very different uh, situation. And, Lots of times I li- also like to say, you, you don't know what yes, you don't know right. until somebody tells you, right? So <laughs> sometimes it's just worth it just to maybe not hire them permanently, but at least at least go in there for, you know, for a review. Yeah, for some guidance, right? Yep. 800-454-1184. It'd be so much nicer to worry less about your retirement plan. Just focus on having fun. And Eric, that's why you and your team are here is to really just, you know, guide retirees, help them with strategies along the way. Like you said, you helped that, uh, you know, you've helped a lady before with her social security and helped her try to figure that out. And you can even go back. You said uh, you can go back and claim it with within six months, right? Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of different tools. And so, you know, one of the things is you can set a time to visit with us at uh, our toolbox site or just get a lot of great educational materials that give you a little bit more more details and a little bit more things to think about. And then, yeah, then it's up to you if, if you want to take action, of course. So you can always text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox 800-454-1184 or download it directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. And when you are listening to Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman, I'm Luann Fulmer. We are reaching into our mailbag like we do occasionally. This next question is from Marty. And he says, I'm retiring next year, and I expect that I'll be in a lower tax bracket at that time. But how do I know how much tax I should pay every time I make a withdrawal? I've always just had taxes withheld from my paycheck, and I've never had to think about it. It is amazing how many people just are confused about literally just the logistics of how do I get a check? Yeah. Right? How, how do I how yeah. do I recreate my 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 play check since I don't have a paycheck? Uh-huh. <laughs> anymore, yeah, yeah, right? I love that. So yeah. you can go so, you know, how do you do it? Well, you have to figure out which sources of income are you taking money out of? Are you taking it out of savings accounts where there's no tax issue? If you're taking it out of IRA, obviously you can have taxes withheld. If you're turning on Social Security, you can actually have uh, federal taxes withheld. And I always urge people to do that because that gets you a lot less trouble at tax time. Mm -hmm. But just like in California, Social Security is not state taxable. So it doesn't help you on the state side of things. Uh, You know, so, yeah, with your IRAs, if you're taking money out of there, you usually want to do withholding. Sometimes you might have to pay quarterly estimates, which is, you know, where you actually send in a check every three months to to the state and to the government. So... Yeah, it is something that you want to be planned for. It, it does get a lot more confusing. And really the weird part is you may or may not be in a lower tax bracket because, you know, again, you want to look at your adjusted, you know, not just your adjusted gross income, but you want to look at your taxable income. And lots of times your taxable income in retirement is actually higher. Hmm. So, you know, one of the things you have to look for is how am I really structuring that? And where is that money coming from? So definitely a good time to get advice. <laughs> okay. Very good. Again, I like to give this number out because you might even have a question that, you know, from whatever we're talking about, tease off another question for you. So that number again is 800-454-1184. And you can text the word visit to go in for a visit. And you can text the word toolbox to get everything that's in that toolbox, including Eric's book, Worry Less Wealth. All right, last question for you, Eric. This is from Gordon. He says, we recently paid off our house, which was a great feeling, but now we have about $3,000 we don't spend every month. We're already maxing out our retirement accounts, and I don't want to leave it to our into our checking account. So where should I be putting this money? Yeah, it's great that they, they were able to pay that off. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it does free up a lot of cash. And so, yeah, now you have to figure out, okay, where, where are we going to put that money? Well, obviously, a lot of just savings accounts are, are pretty good right now, interest rate wise, but that does create taxable income. And I think that's going to be the one of the biggest shocks for, for next year taxes is how much people had to pay tax on their interest at the bank because we really had, nobody's paid interest from a bank <laughs> taxes on it for 20 years, yeah, right? We, think haven't, about we that. haven't gotten any good interest for so long. Yeah. And so that's one thing you could do, but you know, there are also more tax efficient places to go. There are other specially designed life insurance actually that you can fund 
uh, you know, that if, if it's done right and, and, and you're purchasing it for the right reasons and you know all the details going in, there's silly stuff like people call it the laser fund and all these other things that should be illegal. But if, if you're talking about it for real and, and, and a legitimate situation and with real knowledge, um, you know, some of those types of plans actually can you know, not only build up some money tax deferred, but also, you know, like I said, give you some long term care benefits, which you know, can be something that, that people really need to plan for. So, you know, there's a lot of options. Obviously, you could do other stuff. If if you're still working, you can fund, uh, you know, Roth accounts if you're not over the income limits. Uh, but that won't quite, you know, that's more 3000 a month is more than those maximums. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of those things where you definitely want to get a little planning. But I would think heavily on the tax side of things because if you've already funded a whole bunch of pre-tax accounts, you're going to have a big tax headache when you hit retirement already. So mm-hmm. if we make more money tax efficient, it's going to help you out a lot. So uh, again, one of the things that you can get access to is a ton of stuff about how long will my money last? What's my social security decision time frame? All these great things in our book and even a way to meet with us. You know, that's all sitting there at the digital toolbox. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800 454 1184. Again, text the word toolbox 800 454 1184 or go online, download it directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. Still not done yet. We'll be right back with the rest of our show and Eric Heckman. This is Wealth Creator Radio. Are you happy with your Medicare plan? Even if you are, what was good for you this year might not be what's best for you next year. The team at Heckman Financial can help you sort through all the options to find the best one for you. Call now, 800-454-1184. That's 800-454-1184. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wealth Creator Radio so you can stay up to date on ways to build your wealth and create a retirement you and your family will enjoy for years to come. Like and subscribe today and create your wealth for tomorrow with Wealth Creator Radio. Hi, this is Wealth Creator Radio with Eric Heckman. I'm Luann Fulmer. Eric and I often discuss challenges and risks that happen in retirement. So, Eric, I think it's time for you to give us an example of something that has happened, someone who has experienced one of those retirement obstacles. We call it a financial fail. So what do you have for us today, Eric? This is, uh, I won't call her Beth, but yeah, she was had some health issues and she was a, a nurse and she had, could have had a lifetime pension, but she wanted just to, to take the lump sum distribution because she figured with her health, it wouldn't last as long and, you know, be a smarter decision. And so we set up a way to, to have her have an income for life for part of the money and then have, a, you know, a pot of the money that would also be available if she needed it. And then, of course, one of her daughters needed help, so she wanted to help her. And then another daughter needed help. She she kept helping her, and she kept helping them, and kept helping them. Uh And, you know, after about four or five times saying, you're taking out too much, we we almost basically stopped even having to tell her that because she was was just death to the the consequences or whatever you want to call it. But basically, she spent down one account and then had to raid the account that was going to pay the lifetime income before we were going to turn it on. And... It was just something that that was pretty much a mess. And, you know, I've seen that with a lot of clients where they think that they're helping the next generation by using up all their money. But no, you're not. (laughs) You know, know, they're younger. They can still struggle. They can still figure out a way to save. They can figure out a way to move to a cheaper area or do something different. Right. There's always a solution long term. But there is no more time when you're in retirement. If you're retired and you're spending down assets too fast. You can't come back from that. So that's what we try to do every every year with our clients when we're doing those progress meetings and we're going through to see how things are going and making sure things are all on track. But, you know, we had another case where, where a couple, uh, they told us when they retired three years earlier that they're going to spend 9000 a month in retirement. And when they did the math on how much they're withdrawing out of their bank accounts, it was 15. You know, that, that's a big difference. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> that's a lot, lot more. And we showed that they were going to be running out of money in about 10 years at that clip. And you have to be having somebody there to help you to tell you these things. Lots of times from an ex- external viewpoint is a lot better because lots of times you just don't see it and you're blind to it. So 
I would say one of the things that people want to get is get a lot of data, get a lot of education, really know what's going out there. And so one of the things we set up is all this great resources on the digital toolbox where will your money last as long as you? Are you paying too much in taxes? Even my book, Worry Less Wealth, and even a time to set up, even a link to set up a time to talk with me. So all that is at the digital toolbox. All you have to do is text the word toolbox to 800-454-1184. Again, text the word toolbox, 800-454-1184, or go online directly at wealthcreatorradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week. Information provided during Wealth Creator Radio is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute investment tax or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action. Annuity guarantees are based solely on the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuing company. Individuals should thoroughly review the contract for specific details of the product features and costs. Income payments and withdrawals from deferred annuities are generally taxable as ordinary income in the year they are taken. Eric Heckman offers investment advisory services through Heckman Financial and Insurance Services, Inc., a registered investment advisor. Any tax advice given as part of this presentation is not intended to be used and cannot be used by the taxpayer for the purpose of avoiding tax penalties or promoting, marketing, or recommending to another party any matter or transaction addressed herein. The views and opinions expressed in the program are not necessarily those of the radio station or its sponsors, and they should not construe as legal, tax, or investment advice. You should always consult the appropriate advisor before making any financial decision.